Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off meta setup, we'll be using Touch of Malice and crafting a build that results in negating its negative effects it provides. I've finally gotten the weapon after so many runs, and now that I have it, I could do a build for it that I've long been waiting to do. It's going to utilize healing rifts, devour, and child with your gods to make the build as functional as it can be in most content. However, please note that this isn't designed for endgame in the slightest bit, and there's a number of issues that I do want to talk more about. To start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void, where defeating a target with Void abilities activate Devourer. Then you want Child of the Old Gods, where upon crafting a Rift, you cast a Void Soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you back Grenade, Melee, Class Ability, and Health for the user. The plan here is to use the newly updated Sanguine Alchemy to retain our Rift duration, while at the same time we get Devourer on demand to overall counteract the effects of Tom. Although Sanguine is more ideal for those using a pairing weapon that is the same as their subclass types, its main trait works with every Warlock's Rift, and not just the one. Fragments used are Echo of Remnants, where your lingering grenade duration are extended, Echo of Instability, where defeating a target of grenades grant volatile rounds, Echo of Undermining, which provides users a 15% grenade debuff, and Echo of Persistence, where void buffs applied to you are increased. And leaning into the Child of Your Gods and Devourer effect, we want to slow enemies down into a small funnel so that we can both get a consistent devour on hand and also weaken them enough for a child of your gods effect to fully kick in. Simply, the basis of the build is to keep your health constantly regenerating so that we can always use the final round of Tom for high damage. If done correctly, your health should stay afloat and never reach critical unless something very impactful occurs. For the mods and stats section, we can keep this area pretty light as you only need to have your recovery at tier 7 to 10 and your discipline at tier 7. The main one you must focus on is the recovery speed, as this, combined with Sanguine and the Old Gods effect, is what will sustain the build for long. If you can't reach tier 10 recovery, then do not worry, as tier 7 to 8 is fine to go, as long as you make use of the Old Gods effect, where, if it is a kill, it will grant you Rift Energy back. On top of that, mods such as bolstering detonation and distribution will also help massively if you need it the most. But simply, utilizing Sanguine's alchemy effect to the fullest will allow you to not worry about needing to get back fast class ability. As further note, we do have Onto the Breach and Protective Breach that will not only give us a Void Breach which grants class energy back, but also grants us an overshield as well. This isn't fully required, but it's a nice option to have and it's also seasonal only. Your discipline at tier 7 is also fine how it is, so keep it how it is as we can make use of the Font of Focus mod which will provide us with a plus 30 to the current stat we have. That should be it, as we won't be using our grenades too much, and only really using it here and there, and for triggering devour at ease. After that, you're left with armor charges to deal with, so having charged up will expand how many charges we can carry once we collect the normal power, and stacks on stacks will increase the overall amount of charges by 2 instead of 1. After that, having the firepower, Reaper and Kinetic Cypher mod will further help with creating orbs of power at a faster rate for us. All of this will be built into the Kinetic Weapon Surge mod times 2 which will provide a 17% damage boost for as long as we can keep our charges up and going. Combine that with Time Dilation mod for that extra 5 seconds and non and the Powerful Attraction mod and we can keep a nice and steady rate of increased damage where we don't need to move around too much. Now lastly, the weapons being used will of course be the Touch of Malice Exotic Scout Rifle. The following weapon looks cool and sounds cool to use, but the way it works tends to push a lot of players off the idea of ever using it. The weapon gets stronger once you hit the final round and upon net of 3 kills you also get health back, which is great for the following build as it actively does what it needs to do to keep the user alive as long as possible. It's quite strong when you use the final round on enemies as it can chew through elemental shields pretty well, and its blight attack is also great for quickly blinding groups of targets when you need it in a pinch. The only issue with the weapon is that, one, it's not easy to get for a lot of people, as it's very RNG heavy. Secondly, the amount of damage you take is quite severe if you don't have any additional healing involved while using it on the final round. Sadly, there isn't really an alternative that I can think of for players who want to use a fallen weapon in the build. The only thing close to its similarities is the Tom Reach matchbook, and that's something that requires a slightly different setup to make it work. Although it's nice to finally use the weapon that I've been long looking forward to since the day of its release, it has some issues that make the weapon feel too weak to be used in anything outside of seasonal activities. 
The following build is focusing on enhancing his strength and reducing his negative nature when the user gets their health down to critical and I would say that the build has been quite successful in the run of things. With a standard riff, you get the option to release a child your gods onto a target and watch as it drains, debuffs and buffs ourselves over time is given. At the same time, our riffs will be lasting a lot more often thanks to Sangwei's exotic effect or freezing the countdown timer it has. This, along with Devourer, at around 15 seconds duration, means that our overall performance with the weapon is vastly improved and prevents the need to death occurring by self-inflicting injuries. With how strong the healing factor this build is providing, it can excel well in anything seasonal or ritual based activity the game can provide, even PvP to a small degree. However, as much as I like the weapon, it comes with issues that prevents it from being overall usable in most light tier endgame content. Firstly, the weapons for some reason don't work with barrier, overload or unstoppable mods at times. This is kind of odd as the weapon is branded as a scout, but it doesn't take this season mods to count as a champ mod. Not an overall big issue, but it does prevent me from using it in endgame content to where this sort of build would do really well in. Secondly, the self inflicting damage effect is way too much for the user, and unlike Tommy's matchbook that will only hit a certain threshold of health and then stop there, Tom doesn't and it will outright kill you if you try it even more. This prevents the weapon from being used in more content as the risk of dying is increased drastically the moment you use it and fire the weapon outside of a safety bubble. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the idea behind the weapon and how powerful you can get when you use the exotic effect fully. It's just this one small negative detail where it drains your health is where the weapon falls short of being great. As long as you use this build with the weapon, you can achieve a lot out of it and get some good mileage if you enjoy the premise of the weapon itself. Just remember what I said about the negatives and you should be golden from there. But overall, what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below, but at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a player available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.